So if you're growing in the ground, um, there are a number of different kinds of soil, some of which are really good for growing food and some which aren't. And, and it's pretty easy to tell what kind of soil it is just by picking it up and holding it in your hand. So uh, clay soil uh, can be really high in nutrients, but is also really hard and, and it's hard for the, the roots to, to, to grow and, and, and uh, for, for water to percolate through. Sand is, uh, the water flows through very easily. It's lighter, but it doesn't necessarily have the same kind of nutrients. Loam is kind of what most people are, are aiming for. It's kind of light and fluffy um, and, and it does have lots of nutrients. So if you go out in, in your garden and you pick up the soil in your hand, if it clumps together, then odds are it's clay. If it just kind of crumbles apart, then it's probably closer to uh, sand. And then loam will be somewhere in between. There's a picture here of a, of a jar that you can, you can take the soil from your garden, mix it up with water, shake it up in a jar, and then let it sit for a bit. And all of these layers that you see here tell you all the different kinds. Of, of components of what your soil is made up. So it'll give you an indication of, of what, you're, uh, what you're working with. And that's, there's instructions for how to do that in some of the resources I've sent you. Um, so people say, well, okay, I've um, been trying to garden and I'm not so happy with the soil I have. There are things that I can add to it. So if you go into a garden center and um, you're looking to at garden amendments, there's some names of, of soil. It, it may be hard to tell which, which kind you want to add. So um, for instance, black earth is something that you, you may hear about. Uh, again, black earth is the kind of thing that you, you tend to use if you're doing flower beds or, or lawns. So I'm not so familiar with it. But what I've heard about it is that, you know, it may lighten your soil a little bit, but it's actually, it doesn't have a lot of nutrients. It sounds like, oh, this is this really rich material, um, but it, it's not necessarily rich with the kind of nutrients that you want. Topsoil is a better uh, kind of soil. It, it has uh, more of that organic matter that's going to, to have nutrients. Um, but my, the one that I work with the most that I really like to work with is compost. So compost is uh, just uh, organic matter, food scraps uh, that have been broken down into usable kind of, of garden amendment. So you can make it yourself. You can buy it in bags already, in which case there's a, like a whole range of, of uh, different kinds. You can get cow compost, you can get sheep compost, you can get shrimp compost. Uh, you can even get worm compost. Uh, and worm composting is something you can do in an apartment if you if you want to. Uh, so compost is is the kind of uh, amendment that has both the the nutrients, but it also has some of this this soil life, some of the soil critters I call them, and I'll come back to that in a sec. Uh, peat moss is something that you you may see as well. Now peat moss doesn't have a lot of nutrients, but um, what it's good for is it really lightens soil. So if you have a really heavy clay, then you can add peat moss to it and it'll uh, help absorb water better. And uh, the only problem is peat moss is not the most environmentally friendly thing because uh, it comes from peat bogs. It's a, it's a plant that's harvested and, and dried and uh, so it can, it can be over harvested and then we won't have any more. It takes a very long time for it to all grow back. So um, if, you're, if you're looking for something to lighten your soil, again, compost is something that's a bit more of a renewable resource. Now, uh, you'll often find triple mix, and um, it depends on what the, the components are that the people are using, but um, it, it usually is made up of peat, compost, and, and topsoil. So um, you just have to, to ask and see what the, what the proportions are to see if it's what you really want. Uh, potting soil is another thing that uh, that you'll see in bags. That's really good if you're working with containers, because if you're if you're doing container gardening, you don't want a really heavy soil. It's uh, it's just going to pack hard as a rock, and then your roots aren't going to grow. So um, you want to look for for potting soil. Uh, seed starting mix is something else you'll see at this time of year. So if you're wanting to start um, your own seeds, uh, then it helps to have a really again light medium uh, that, that doesn't have um, all of the nutrients that soil has because 
seeds, they come with their own nutrient package. When they first start to grow, they don't need a lot of nutrients, so you want to start with something like seed starting mix. Um, so now to come back to this, this uh, diagram here, um, you could spend hours, days, um, looking at all of the organisms that in, are in the soil. As I say, soil is not dirt. Soil is a, is a living thing and um, all of these organisms that you'll, that some you can't see, some you can, they all work together in a very integrated way to give plants what they need. It's, it's, uh, it's quite interesting to find out how all of these organisms work together. Um, but then what that means is that you have to think about how you are helping this ecosystem thrive. Because if you do help this ecosystem thrive, then your plants are going to be a lot healthier. So keep that in mind all the time as we start talking about some of the ways to, to keep plants healthy. Think about how is this, this network of organisms being supported. So speaking of soil amendments, so there are things that you can add to make the soil um, uh, more nutritious. Um, and it depends on, on what the condition of your soil is and what, what you're trying to grow and so on. I've mentioned compost, um, manure, uh, because you know if you're on a farm and you have animals and you have different kinds of crops and so on, you have that whole sense of an ecosystem. In the city, it's really, it's a lot harder to get the, the animal um, manure contribution. Um, so it is something that's kind of missing. So I personally I'll use things like uh, uh, sheep compost or horse compost um, and shrimp compost is really good too. Any Anything like uh, shrimp compost or, or kelp or fish emulsion, anything from the ocean basically is going to have a lot of the, the mineral nutrients that, that plants need that you wouldn't get through just your backyard compost. Um, and things like that help, uh, sorry, uh, rock dust and, and bone meal will also add things like calcium is really important. So when we talk about soil, a lot of people are really concerned about urban soils and are they contaminated? Um, in reality, uh, it, it's kind of intermittent. Some places are quite toxic and other places are not. So um, Toronto Public Health has come out with this really great guide because uh, for a, a home gardener or for a community gardener to try and get soil tests done is very expensive. And it may not be the most effective way to figure out whether your soil is actually good for growing. So they've come up with this process that, that helps you take a look at the site, look at the history of it and, and decide whether, you know, is this a high risk area um, or is it low risk? And then it gives you a bunch of options for how to respond depending on whether it's it's high risk or low risk. So uh, I do have a, a link for it in the resources and I highly recommend if you're if you're going to start in a new space to take a look at it because it'll help you think through um, what is safe for your soil. And, and um, the other piece of that is um, if you are at all concerned about the soil that you may be growing in, one option is to grow things in, in containers. Now, of course, containers are good if you're on a, on a balcony or a driveway or a patio or something, but uh, sometimes you can do uh, containers if, if you're not sure about the soil or if you're not sure how long you're going to be in this space. Uh, containers are, are movable, so they come in all different uh, shapes and sizes for different purposes, and so there's a lot of uh, flexibility there. Um, you can even use recycled materials to to uh, to create them. So you're you're, you're reusing, repurposing things. Um, and just be aware that that some materials might, like uh, treated wood, might have um, toxins that will be released. So you need to be careful about uh, not using that. Um, I've already talked a little bit about um, watering, but I'll say that here there's an example of a container that we call a sub-irrigated planter. So if you're in a space where you're not able to water every day and it's very hot and dry, these are really good option because it's got um, a reservoir in the bottom. So you can see there's a little pipe on the lower right hand side that you can pour water into and then the plants take up water uh, depending on how much they need and it doesn't evaporate out, it doesn't dry out in the same way. So it's kind of a, a clever device. Mm -hmm.